We got a bunch of calls coming in. Why don't we take another one? We it's got like a meeting, by the way. Patrick from Austin. Mm. Uh, it's like Patrick on the line. Hey, Patrick, welcome to Clean Radio. Welcome. Hey, how you doing? Good, hey, Patrick. Good. How are you? I'm all right. And thanks for, by the way, liking. You know, I spoke to Patrick a couple times this week. Patrick called last week. He was sober for a while, and he's struggling with crack. Uh, no, oh. it's not the crack right now. It's uh, actually alcohol, which is not my drug of choice. Mm. That's right. You were smoking pot, right? And no alcohol. Alcohol. Oh, alcohol. And so you basically have switched, as they say. I hate to say this. You're switching seats in the tit- on the Titanic right now. Alcohol's just as bad. I mean, yeah. alcohol is a terrible thing to struggle with. So, right. What What's happening? What's going on? You know, it, it's just hard for me to justify putting it down because I'm at that point where. It never was my thing, and now all of a sudden, you know, I'm doing it every day, but, you know, I'm smiling while I'm doing it. I'm socializing while I'm doing it. Like, today I was out, you know, shooting pool all day and having fun with some friends. And But, you know, the thing is, I know that when I leave the bar, I'm not going to stop. You know, right. I'm, I'm home right now, and mm-hmm. I'm continuing, and they're probably all sleeping, getting ready for work. Well, that's tomorrow. the difference between you but, and them. You know, what's that? That's the difference between somebody that you know really has a problem right. with substances. Right. Well, general. it's that that right. continued compulsion to drink. You know, the, right. the right. where all of a sudden you're driven to drink and unable to easily stop. Mm-hmm. It's as they say, the phenomenon of craving. Yeah, which is right. like you know, if you're an alcoholic, if you're well, a drug a addict, drink. it touches your tongue. Right. Enters and, your blood and, and you know, it's even just, if it's not doing anything yeah. anymore. I mean, the studies show that after your first uh, like two drinks, yep. all the positive benefits from drinking stop. Yeah. So <laughs> everything you drink above those first two drinks, you're just getting into a bad zone. So, and then if you're drinking progressively over hours, you're just digging yourself deeper and deeper. And so, Patrick, so, last week you called and you said you you'd try and you, have did you go to any meetings this week? You know, I usually go to the Monday and Thursday night meeting, but I got to be honest, this week I did not. No, I'm happy you're. Uh, pl- thank you. Uh, we we appreciate your honesty. That's great. Um, what are you going to try to do about it this week? Are you, how are you going to try to get, even if it's not drink? You know, when it, well, what it, about it, removing himself from the environment, yeah. Patrick? Like you should maybe just don't go to the bars, don't hang out with the people, don't you know? Try to put yourself in a place where literally physical place where there are people that are living in a healthy way, whatever that yeah. may be. You need to substitute it with something, though. You can't yeah. just sit but at a home gym, right. and sit the... there ruminating about why, how you're not right. hanging out with your friends at the right. bar. Right. You right. drive yourself nuts. Right. Yeah. yeah. So, Patrick, what are you going to – do you have a, Do you have any sort of health insurance? Yeah, I do. So what about the idea of getting help for yourself? Um, you know, that's I, – I, I don't know about all that. And, you know, I, I've been to treatment before when I was 25. And um, I don't know. I worked in a treatment center for like a year. And, and I, got a de- I got a degree in human services with a focus in addiction. So for me, it's like going to a treatment center is kind of, I guess my ego gets in the way of yeah. it. Mm-hmm. It's kinda... Yeah, you know, Patrick, I was just talking about that earlier, though. You know, that it's like, you know, I got, I got my MSW and, yeah. you know, own nine psychiatric hospitals and... Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, I took till I was forty till I figured out I had a problem. Patrick, has your car ever broken down on a highway? <laughs> I don't have a license. Okay. <laughs> have you ever? But you have you ever? The license broke down on the highway. Yeah. Have you ever? Have you ever had anything break? Yeah. And what do you do? Do you? Uh, how do you fix it? Well, I'm an addict. I find ways. <laughs> okay. Um, well, he's like you. You're ruining all my good analogy <laughs> metaphors, Patrick. My point is, if my car breaks down on the highway, I call AAA. I don't push it to the gas station. And oh, re- yeah. well, but the other thing is, you know, it's very common for people that are trained as treatment um, advisors or people who are doctors and nurses. I mean, I had a really good friend that was a doctor, and he hit his head and uh, didn't go to another doctor, thought he could treat himself, mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, took a mirror and stitched his head up and ended up getting an infection, died of a brain wow. um, infection on yeah. the couch, and they found him like two weeks later. It's very, very common for people who think they know what's the going God on. The God complex in it, or Superman. No, it's oh. just that, you know, you think because you know how to treat them, you, you treat people that you can treat yourself, and nobody can treat themselves. That's the right. number one rule is that you shouldn't treat yourself. By the way, you're listening to Clean Radio. That's Clean with a K. We're on the phone tonight with um, Patrick in Austin, Texas. Patrick, what are we going to do about getting help this week? That's the question. Even if it's one baby step till the t- next time we speak to you on the radio, mm-hmm. what are you going to do for yourself? You know, I don't know. I mean, I've been... You know, the the, uh, the thought of treatment has crossed my mind, but at the same time, it's like, 
you know, I'm working towards getting my license back, and, and I know that um, if I were to disappear from my work for 30 days, that, that's a big step, and I don't know how I, I could not explain that in a way of saying, hey, I'm going to treatment because I'm an addict, because I wouldn't have a job. Well, Patrick, you know, there's so many different forms of treatment along what we call, as you probably know, the continuum of care. Yeah. So residential right. treatment is pretty, you know, um, you know, intensive care. But there's evening uh, intensive outpatient programs. There's therapists that you can meet right. with. Addiction counselors. Addiction counselors. There's Blogs. All sorts you of treat levels. people with Skype, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Erica yeah. actually does Skype uh, therapy. Yeah. Or phone. You, I mean, listen, you could... You phone could, therapy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You, could, uh, you, could, you could reach out and, and get some help if you want, but, you know, I think... The first step is to really, you know, do you want do you want to get yeah. help? Do you want to try to do something to help yourself or some well, kind can, of self care? I, I, you know, I can hear that ambivalence, right? I mean, I, I and, hear and I recognize that. Yeah. You know, he's at you know, that point. I, yeah, I want I want to get help, right. but he's I, waiting for Judah. He's waiting for Judah to, get, Judah to get him at the airport <laughs> and the drug dealer. <laughs> <laughs> and um, right, Patrick. And whoever because, gets there first. Whoever gets there first. <laughs> because Patrick contacted me actually this week on Facebook, and uh-huh. only in an, only somebody that wants to get help would Facebook somebody that wants to help people with alcoholism and addiction right. unless Patrick's an absolute masochist. No, of you course know. in his right. heart he so wants So he up. wants yeah. it, Patrick. Mm-hmm. I know right. you do. Mm-hmm. So... No, no and, and, and I, I definitely do. Like like I said, I, I just relapsed back in June when I went to Florida, my hometown in West Palm Beach, to uh, visit. But, um... You know, I mean, like my life before that, for the last year, it was it was amazing. You know, I, I was deeply involved in the program, and I had a lot of fun, and I had a really uh, intimate relationship with my girlfriend. I mean, things were just amazing. You know, and um, you know, when I had relapsed, it was just like I, I guess I had kind of I don't know what it was. I think I just burnt it out. I mean, I was too focused on on. Um, How about you? I just weren't thinking, ready. Well, I, I was, like, getting high on, on the events I was doing rather than getting, like, um, balancing my life. I was more focused on when, what I'm going to do next. Like, I would go to SeaWorld or I would go camping or I, I had to be doing something in my life. And once, the, the finally, the one weekend that I wasn't doing anything, it was boring. So I was like, oh, well, this sucks. Let's go get high. Well, you have to get to know yeah. yourself. I think the first thing that, that comes, what you just said, is is you need to cultivate some self-love, honestly, because when all things fall apart and things, relationships don't work and jobs are over and, you know, not everything's going to work out, you are, you're going to have to learn to love who you are in the quiet moments. And that's really, I think, important to, you know. Patrick, uh, we're running out of time, but stay on the line. Um, if it's okay, I would love for you to give Rand your your number. I'm gonna call, I'm gonna call you tomorrow, and we'll talk off the line. Yeah, we're running out of time, so yeah, we don't have, if that's to... cool with you, so we just don't have to only talk on Facebook. Yeah, that's that's cool. Okay, cool, Patrick. All right, thanks. Let's Take go care. to another call. We got uh, yeah. Matthew from Tampa Bay. Matthew, welcome to Clean Radio. How are you tonight? Hey, what's up, ladies and gentlemen? How are you all doing? <laughs> now he's becoming a professional. We have an man. intoxicated Matthew from uh, Tampa, Florida. And Matt's been actually, just so everybody out there that's listening understands, Matt's uh, girlfriend is Judy, who's coming to clean on the scholarship. And Matt is trying to also get in, and he's trying to get insurance to get to come to clean, Matt, right? All right, well, I've had some, uh, to me, I, I think it's been major... Um, improvements. Um, here, I'll give you a quick scenario. Um, quick. Uh, let's see. This this weekend, I had my boys um, right because I'm I'm going through divorce, so I bought a six pack the night. I bought a six pack Friday when I got home coming from. He's got Judy, morning. by the way, telling him what. That's really funny. I know. It's like, She's it's filling like, in the holes. It's like, <laughs> it's like so. I, ha- I have a drink on the way over there. And then it's like I get home and I bring them back to my place, and it's like um, I'm watching them watch TV and they fall asleep. And then like I look at them on the couch, I'm like, oh my god, they're my two little angels. And I go into the bathroom to go to the bathroom and I look at myself in the mirror for like 20 minutes. And I'm like, I don't want to live this lifestyle anymore. So like I poured, I drank one beer and I poured the five others out. I had one. I well, I had. I opened. I opened up one. I drank one on the way over to the boys' house, and I drank half of one when they were with me, but I couldn't finish it. And that's when I went and I poured all, I guess, four and a half out. 
And uh, that, to me, that was a big step. And then I went back on Thursday night prior to picking them up out to the BMX track, and that was really a big improvement for me because I was taking drinking over doing stuff that I was very passionate for. But it's like I constantly was looking at my truck going, okay, if I do one more lap, I can go to my truck go to the grocery store, get a six-pack, and might go back to the grocery store, but I never did that. So I finished, I That's finished awesome. my practice, yeah. and I came home, and I didn't drink. And then today, um, I went down to one of the local skate shops and bought myself and Judy a longboard, and um, we both have been practicing. Well, I mean, I've been riding for 18 years, but it's like I... I taught her how to ride a longboard in like three hours today so like after we we get done talking tonight after we get done talking tonight we're gonna go skate one of the local <laughs> we're gonna go skate one of the local uh, we're gonna go okay um, I, uh, but, matt it's great but we really are um so where are you right now what's the plan in 30 okay, seconds I'm in, I'm in i'm in a judy's apartment right now my plan is that I, I still feel that I, I need help. Okay. Right now, these these are just um, these are these are ways that I these are the. You know, Matthew. I hear. I hear. You know what I've heard over the last five minutes. I've heard that you're working really hard at trying to figure out a way to make this work, and yet you don't really have any real tools. All you're and doing he, is sort of forcing yeah. yourself not to engage in destructive behavior, mm -hmm. and that's right. what treatment's about. Treatment is about figuring out ways to do things other than just have this constant ongoing battle and struggle with yourself to not drink. It's about getting to the place where you don't feel compelled to drink. It's about getting to the place where you actually are happy that you're not drinking, and it's about getting to the place where your life becomes bigger and more involved because you're sober. And that's what treatment's yeah. really about. We're going to have to uh, drop you off right. the air, but we will be speaking to you again, and Judy, obviously. Yeah. Because um, the show's kind of wrapping up here, but thank you for calling again. And uh, let's thank our guests. Uh, we had an amazing show tonight. Let's thank uh, Mark Ant. How do people find you? How do people? What's the? What do you got going on? You got Poker Girls coming out. You don't know when yet, but yeah, I got, I got a couple of shows that I'm uh, just in post production on. Um, one is the Kickstarter thing that Annie takes off, yeah. and another one called the Program, which is about uh, these guys that are dealing with their demons and, and their actual demons. Right. And so it's a drama supernatural. But you can find me at markgant.com. Or Twitter, follow me at Mark Gant. And you promise you'll call when you're in Panama? I will, totally will. Mm. That's great. And uh, thank you very much. Absolutely. And also, let's, uh, I mean, really, thank you for coming in tonight. You, you're a good dude. Awesome. I'm going to give you that shirt. Just, awesome. That was the only way you would come in. <laughs> um, <laughs> and uh, let's thank the amazingly, uh, just the, uh, the awesomeness that is Erica Spiegelman, oh, therapist, blogger, right and really, and, and just uh, and an all-around mm. great girl. How do people thank contact you? you? Um, uh, you can go to ericaspiegelman.com to find me. Um, I work, you know, at a treatment center, and I'm working with another outpatient treatment center. Um, but you can find me at my own website or my blog at freeaddictionfreeliving.com. And um, I would love to help anybody. And I always return calls. I always return emails. So if you want to contact me on my website, that's great. Any questions you have, you know, more than happy to help. Yeah. Well, thank you so much both for coming in. Judah? You and I have some things we need to discuss. Um, uh -oh. Really? Yeah. Um, Nothing bad. Huh? Oh, <laughs> you know th that should always be the first thing people say. To, you know, I, I it drives me crazy when people say, "I have to talk to you later." I know, right? I've got so much. Just I tell me now. Talk. Tell me just, now. Just right? give me a preview. Uh, you know, it's just it's part of the whole deal. And mm -hmm. uh, to everybody out there that's going through a rough time, to everybody that's struggling, please. You know, keep the faith. Uh, we'll talk to you next week. The discussion continues at CleanRadio.com. Are you struggling with an addiction that's ruining your life? Want to have a confidential conversation with a professional that will immediately assist you? Do you suspect a loved one is abusing drugs and would like a free drug testing kit and consultation? Clean Treatment Center is standing by right now to help those with addictions and the people who care about them. Call 888-601-6040. That's 888-601-6040 or go to Clean Treatment Center, that's clean with a K, cleantreatmentcenter.com.